Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's bobsled time. Cool <laughs> runnings. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> kiss, <laughs> kiss my coach. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Critical Thinking Podcast. I'm your host Kyle, along with my co-host Rick the Rizzo, and we're introducing Miguel Garza from Comico Podcast. Okay, so it's fucked um, up because I threw his last name in there. Now they're really gonna look for you. What the fuck, man? Yeah, Change my name, I say. Social security number is six. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, why were there three sixes in my social security number? <laughs> Dicks. <laughs> All right. Well, let's kind of get into the show here a little bit. What we talk about everything. We talk about movies, games, TV, uh, collectibles. Uh, we're going to start off with the movies right now. All right. Let's see here. Uh, movie news. Uh, let's go with Rogue One. It's coming out. I don't know if y'all are looking forward to watching Rogue One. I'm coming out. really interested in watching Rogue One. Another female lead. Yes. Another female lead in that one. Yeah. It's, but it's just the way they put that preview together. It looks gritty. Like a yeah. gritty... Star Wars, like you know, like a like a war movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly what it looks like. And what is uh, news is that Darth Vader is going to be in the movie, and reprising his role as the voice of Darth Vader is going to be James Earl Jones, along with his respirator. Yes, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but didn't I see a report saying Hayden Christensen wanted to get back into this? Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. What? He, he was the greatest Vader ever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest <Some> emo Vader. <laughs> I thought that was Kylo Ren. <laughs> yeah, that, that was definitely a letdown for the last ones. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you want to see Darth Vader and his like, as like watch him be in his mean mode, if you would have saw, which uh, Miguel saw it at my house when we watched uh, Star Wars Rebels, mm-hmm. you know the fi- the finale, and he was uh, the opening and the finale of uh, the season uh, two. Uh, you can see how dark Darth Vader would was, and the way he was in that in that movie in that sh- uh, TV show. Going back to Vader, even though he is going to be in the movie, he is not the main protagonist of this movie. He's just going to be kind of like the strategist on how to stop them trying to get the plans. Say, man, Forrest Whitaker's in the movie. That's all you need to know. And he looks cool. I know, doesn't, doesn't he? he? Look cool. Like he <laughs> actually looks like a, that one eye looks like man. That, see, he didn't get that from all the drugs. That literally was <laughs> nice. You know what I'm saying? That was literally like no, it was a war wound. That's why his eye goes slightly that way. That's all it is. It's a war wound. And what's funny is, is that about Forrest Whitaker's character, he's supposed to be a cl- one of the Clone Warriors from the Clone War. Nice. He's supposed to be one of them. So interesting. Interesting. I just know when we saw the trailer, Justin was like, yeah, fuck yeah, Forrest Whitaker, man. For- uh, what is Forrest Whitaker? Yeah, that's a new guy. <laughs> Some black guy. Yeah. <laughs> What's the snipes? Yeah. <laughs> he, he wasn't that black, was he? <laughs> uh, next uh, in some news, uh, Ghostbusters, the new movie coming out. Well, I'm just mentioning. <laughs> Miguel starts heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're all not a fan of it. But we're I'm, I'm, honestly, we're still gonna, probably going to take a look at it just so we can give you a good review on it. I don't know, man. I have no idea how this movie is going to be. I want it to be good. I really do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being a male chauvinist pig and hating on the women Ghostbusters. I don't think it has anything to do with the women, though. I, I, oh God, it's Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, when I saw the Ghostbusters preview, everybody was bashing the characters and everybody was bashing. Really, I, I bashed the CGI. I literally was like, these ghosts look like ass. Yeah, yeah, they just they, uh, ask ghosts. They, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Assy McGee's in the movie. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, yeah. I was the same way. I, I mean, I saw it. I was like, I'm not mad about the girl cast. I'm just more pissed off. I was like, I was like, come on. The first one was more gritty, more believable ghosts that made you kind of like, you know, I was young at the I was, time. I was scared, I was scared as a kid. As a kid yeah. You know, you don't want the ooze, man. You don't want the Statue of Liberty coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and no. what's, what's fun? Okay, Ghostbusters was full of cheesy, dorky mm-hmm. stuff. I think what's going to happen is though they're going to. I can think everybody is cringing because they're going to take it to a level of where it just it goes too much. Like it's going to be slapsticky to the extreme, trying to trying to grab jokes when you don't need to try to grab jokes. It, it's a joke in itself. So when movies try to grab jokes, you can tell. Like you're trying to grab jokes. Stop trying to grab them. And then they start making stupid, disgusting jokes that basically you lose your audience. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen. I, I already know, and I'm going to still go to this movie and pretend like that's not going to happen. But I know it is because how many movies have you gone into and be like, uh, that. 
that really wasn't funny. Adam Sandler. <laughs> nice. Oh, sorry, you know, like, and, and that's pretty much what it's been. They they know what's funny, but they then they like keep they keep going back in and re-editing and retwisting, and they keep trying to pull for funny, and that's what happens. Yeah. Well, you kind of like us when it comes to comics. You got to go in there positive. Believe it's gonna be, you know go in there with open mind, and who knows you might be surprised. Yeah, I'm knows? gonna see it. Don't get me wrong. I'll probably see it Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning when it's yeah. like Monday, man, man, right? Man, That's right. Man, Early man. bird, baby. Early bird. All right. Second, uh, the trailer, the first trailer for the new mechanic Resurrection. I think yeah, yeah Resurrection was released uh, starring Jason Statham because he was in the first one of the mechanic. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know. Did y'all see the movie? Yeah, I saw the, the first movie. one. Yeah, it was also a remake from a Charles Bronson movie called mm-hmm. The Mechanic. Well, now he's back. And he's with and stars with him and Jessica Alba and Tommy Lee Jones, and they want someone's blackmailing him. They kind of like kidnap Jessica Alba, which I think that's his love interest. Mm-hmm. And why wouldn't it be? A true, true. <laughs> and uh, so they give him a list of people that he has to kill, and of course it's especially to make it look like an accident. Mm. And uh, so he goes, and he has a change of heart. He doesn't want to kill him anymore because he's being blackmailed for it. So he wants to get the guy that's doing this to him. And instead of killing Tommy Lee Jones, which is one of his targets, he uh, fakes his own death with Tommy Lee's. And then they go after the guy to try to get his wife back. Okay, let me ask you something. Did y'all watch the original mechanic with Charles Bronson? That would be a no. 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 (laughs) In the original mechanic, um, he dies. Charles Bronson dies. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and in the end, the guy that kills him, he knew he was going to kill him. So he actually rigged the guy's car to explode when he got back to his house. And so he kill ends up killing him. So it kind of ends on that note. So I'm kind of curious since I didn't watch the Jason statement version, if he died in last month, I'm assuming he didn't die. Mm -hmm. So if they go transporter with this series, first of all, fuck them. Because I am a huge mm. Charles Bronson fan. I have Death Wish 2 VHS right mm. over there, motherfucker. But I'm going to tell you right now, when I watched the first mechanic long time ago, Charles Bronson, I loved it. I didn't watch the Jason Salmon because he was making too many transporter style movies where they got retarded. Like, and mm-hmm. again, this is a, I'm an action fan. I understand. I'm not blaming Jason Statement character. I'm blaming the screenwriters who keep dumping out the same fucking script over and over and over again. And just put a different girl in it <laughs> I'm a, yeah that's a nice way to put it. different girl in it and say oh it's not transformers 27 megan fox gets naked once again and we don't really care about the channel that's what it feels like it feels like it's just action 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 mm, same story yet kind of twisted slightly different and here we go again oh he's typecast yeah exactly yeah. death race 2000 transporter 4 mm-hmm. i mean come on <laughs> yeah no I, so I, you don't I, like when he jumps with the car Turns it upside down, hits the crane, takes the bomb off the car, has, lands the car, has sex with a girl. Of course, lands, you know, it comes down, <laughs> lands it perfectly, gets out of the car, has a slight scratch on his face, and everybody's happy. Um, again, I liked um, the Death Race series, I, yeah. not the series. I liked the Death Race original, but they just keep dumping these movies, and it's like stop wasting money on that stuff and make something worth a shit. I got, you know, am I the only one? I guess I'm the only one in the room. Sorry. No, you're hard. No, you're, no, you're, no, you're no, hardcore no, no, no. Charles Bronson guy. I get it. You know, it's like I want it to be stick to the original and make it make a badass remake, but stick to the original. Like, don't mm. now they're just milking the series. Oh, that other one made nine million. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. We're going to make five hundred billion. Like, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> let's let's keep milking that. You know what I'm saying? We'll just get some rated B actors in there somewhere. Throw a hot chick in a bikini. We'll call it a day. Kyle Sorkazy <laughs> right here. <laughs> Sorkazy? Yeah, I'm so just, crazy. No, I'm making a new name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with it. <laughs> All right. And then. And, uh, uh, going into horror movies, which I really do not like horror movies. I'm not a horror movie fan. That's where you take the chicks to, man. Did you see that Jason thing I put? I tweeted out. Yes. Like, it's getting hot in here. It's time to cut up all these hoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have a, if, I think it was uh, 2014, they released a movie called Ouija Board. It was just Ouija. And well, now they got part two coming out, which is called the or- Ouija, The Origin of Evil. Now, I watched the trailer for this movie that's coming out. Uh-huh. The girl, the little girl in the movie creeped me the fuck out. Okay? If well, you, should. You're talking about a little girl. You're not even talking about the woman or the guy in the movie. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no you find out. You, what Basically what it is is like it's the origin of this one Ouija board. And what happens is, is that the mom, she's a, a scam artist. 
Okay. And so she she gets this Ouija board. She puts magnets on the thing and where it goes to her knee and tries to fool these people, right? What a bitch. All right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm all like, oh, this is typical. Well, the little girl goes to the thing not even thinking about the magnets or anything and just starts moving around. She gets possessed by a demon. And in the movie, when you, it shows a little clip of her getting possessed. And I'm talking, she goes backwards almost 90 degrees. And you hear the bones crack. You just hear, and she's like, her eyes go white and her mouth opens wide. And then all of a sudden she comes back. And then the whole time she's just sitting there, it'll start moving by itself. Everybody's freaking out. Even the mom's like, I don't have the magnets under there. You know, she had that look on her face and like it's moving. And then they see the little girl and she's just like, just, a, just this one little girl sitting there smiling at you. And I'm all like, that's kind of creepy. You know, if the horror movie genre would stay creepy and stick with what really scares people, I would say this might make a decent movie. I have not seen the trailer, so I know somebody's going to be like, you haven't seen the trailer. Um, If you put jump scares in these movies, it ruins them. It makes them where they go, ah! And and people, ah, ah, ah." But you watch it again, and it doesn't work. So, again, what made classic horror movies great not the hack and slash. We're not, you know, not them. We're not talking about Jasons and Freddies. What made old good horror movies good was the creep factor. I like the creep factor. The the conjuring creep factor <laughs> shit. The shit that you know where you want to be like, don't go in the room, bitch. Don't go in the room. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, 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 no. don't go in there. And, and that that's what. But when they put the jump scares where it's like constantly, it gets old. Yeah. So as a horror movie genre, uh, just please, I'm I'm gonna do a little prayer. Uh, do nice. not, Lord, give these people the ability to put the jump scares in the movie. Signed, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, and I am, I'm a big horror movie fan. I love horror movies. But I, I like horror movies like um, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I like dark <laughs> comedies. I love movies like that. I like dark. T- okay, I'll give you a great horror movie. And it's not even considered horror. It's probably thriller. The one that's coming out we talked about with the girl that's being stalked by the Great White. Oh, in uh, The Shallows. The Shallows. Oh, that's uh, Blake Lively, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. That movie right there it is, is, homework. is a horror fucking movie. That's a fucking horror movie. You know why it's a horror movie? Because that's some real motherfucking shit. Anytime somebody gets in the water, you know they're thinking that shit. Like, there's a fucking shark that's going to eat my ass. I mean, what are the odds? Yeah, right. <laughs> Dude, gator, come get your ass, man. Must look a fucking shark. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> nah, but no, nah, I saw a trailer of that. It kind of psychologically fucks so with you, man. You, yeah. I ain't getting in the fucking water anymore. I don't even get in my bathtub, man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shark, Can man. I take a shower? Can I take a <laughs> shower? There's no sharks in the shower. <laughs> you know, that, no, I'm, I'm serious. Like Those kind of movies, to me, are more better horror movies. I know it's not a horror movie, and everybody is going to be like, it's not a horror movie. I know it's not, but it is scarier yeah, than any jump scare, period, because it plays on real fears that real people have. Yeah. I mean, how many people watched arachnophobia back in the day and didn't mm-hmm. eat? They saw a spider from 20 feet away like, ah! Say, man, why you got me bringing up spiders in this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention that he talked, to, he talked about that in his podcast. He yeah, fucking hates fear. spiders. See what I mean? That's a real fear. Dude, it's the best part of that fear. movie was John fucking Goodman killing those motherfuckers. <laughs> but ever since I saw that spider crawling that guy's shoe, bit that fucker, oh, and then he died, and then the, the one in the helmet. Always checking your shoes. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I watched the movie with William Shatner back in the 70s, Kingdom of Spiders, where the fucking spiders take over the town. And everything's covered up in fucking webs. Tarantulas are coming there. Yeah, tarantulas, we know they don't bite you. But these fuckers are coming in just biting people up and fucking them up. I'm like, what well, is taking a dark turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right. That's all I have on movie right now. That's pretty right. cool. In the TV news, uh-huh. uh, The Flash. Mm-hmm. I know you're a big fan of the show. So Grant Gustin? Yeah, with Grant Gustin. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be Gustin. You know, you know I ain't going to say who don't know how to pronounce. Maybe Mike might. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. The first episode of The Flash is actually going to be... It's called Flashpoint. Yeah, the season. new episode. The new episode. The new season, I mean. The new season. It's actually going to be called Flashpoint. So it's going to be their version of Flashpoint of him trying to correct what he messed up at the end of season two. Well, you know, I watch the show regularly, and I watch the cartoon. So when he went back to get it, it's like, oh, Jesus, they're going to do the Flashpoint story. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. I love yeah. The Flash. It's really good. Yeah. Really you watch good The Flash? Show. 
Uh, no, they, no, they, don't, they, don't, they don't see you shaking no, your head, right? No, I don't. I don't watch The Flash, unfortunately. Nah. No, I'm. I'm actually right now. I'm so addicted to um, the season finale of Game of Thrones that's coming out this Sunday. I really can't think of anything else. And and you know me, I'm usually super super busy with stuff. So it's like uh, I need to catch up on these, and most of them I just wait till they come out and then I catch up on them. But um, that's the only thing I have in uh, literally TV news is this Sunday. Game of Thrones season finale, supposedly, again, two hours season finale. It's going to be hard to top this last episode, man. Battle of the Bastards. We we went into this in the last podcast. Who are you and, calling a bastard? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, man, that, that I, I'm never, I have not been on the edge of my seat this entire season. I saw all. your tweet. And I'm not, I'm not kidding. I literally was standing there going like, I felt the veil was going to come, but I didn't know. And they, they did not let me down and just... Fuck Ramsey Bolton. Fuck that guy. And thank God he got it the way he did. Um, Jon Snow finally grew some balls. He's been, That's the only thing I've noticed about um, Game of Thrones and R.R. Martin. His characters, you want them to grow. And some of them do. Some of them really grow. And some of them just, they don't want to. They just... <laughs> and it, it bugs... So here you go. You got Jon Snow, who's brought back from the dead, right? And he still is kind of... He's strong, and he's a great character, but he just doesn't... He doesn't have the essence that I want him to have. He doesn't have that, you know, I got nothing left to lose. I'm no longer Night's Watch. You've pissed me the fuck off. You've killed. I can do my vengeance. No. No, he just kind of, well, I guess I got to go take back Winterfell. Only because Sansa is the one who's like, Mm -hmm. motherfucker, go take back my home. Go take back my home. You know, it's my home. Go to your home. Don't you love your home? (laughs) You know, I felt like that's the only reason. And then you have another one. So you got Theon Greyjoy. Okay, he escapes. Yeah, we're going to him. Well, he's got no penis. He's got nothing to lose. He should be either kill himself or be a total, complete fucking psychopath. He should kill himself. <laughs> he probably should, but for what he's done. But so even his sister in the episode that they saw, not the last, they weren't in the mm-hmm. last episode, but except for a little bit. Um, but his sister in the second to last episode was like, "Dude, fucking grow a pair. Like seriously, literally, like grow your dick back." And be the man I need you to be, or go drown somewhere. Reattach that motherfucker. Can't they reattach it? I, <laughs> I'm prob- magic. I mean, they can dr- demons out of the vagina. I'm sure they can do all sorts. <laughs> right? But, but what kills me is think like, about it. Do they keep it after they cut it off? He sent it to his dad. Yeah, unless his he dad ate his it. Dick to his dad. Like, dude, what kills me about it is you have this character that should just lose his mind. I understand that he's got uh, weighings and he feels guilty for what he's done and whatever. I understand that, and I feel for him. But at this point, his sister needs him, and he he gets there, and he's like, "I'm here to support you." Okay, cool. Well, fucking support me then. Do something besides be like, "She needs to be the queen." Yeah. That to me, it's like, dude, seriously. He's still pussy up, man. He ain't. He ain't... I think Jon Snow did the trip when they killed his brother. Yeah, that's when he lost. He, that he shit. lost his. He did a. He did a. Leroy <laughs> Jenkins. <laughs> he, did, he literally Dude. did, and he ran in there and literally was just like, "Fuck this shit! I don't care." One on six thousand, bring it on. He didn't even give a shit if his army was on the Onion Knights over there. Like this motherfucker did. Oh don't. shit! Yeah, follow your commander. Follow. Go 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 go. You know, like literally. Dude, yeah. he's lucky the veil showed up because he was getting all those fuckers killed. They were dying. Dude, the fucking body count. Did you see the the bodies? The fucking hill of bodies. Oh uh, no, it was. Uh, was, was John still eating chicken afterwards? Because he, you know, <laughs> Leroy, had, Leroy had chicken. I was eating chicken. <laughs> no, literally, I felt like. No, he was eating bastard. Yeah, bastard. No, he, yeah, he definitely was. He was like, eating bastard with the dogs. But and even then, after seeing that scene. I, the way that they set it up was so well done. The tension I had that these characters were going to die. And I knew from what I heard in the rumors, and I don't believe like 90% of the rumors now. Like most of them I'm like, eh. I knew the veil was coming. I felt it. But I just, they waited. They waited, man. They waited till you literally like, Jon Snow, he looked like he had just been in a horrible mosh pit. And he was getting smashed down. And like, just literally like, <gasps> You know, and he everybody was dying and cold blooded dying like some Spartan shit, dude. Like they Spartan their ass. Literally. Oh yeah, they did. Whew. He was fucked. He was a dead man. That was it. Forward to it. I'm hoping the season finale does not let me down. I have a feeling what's going to happen though is I'm going to get really lifted up, and then it's going to be like, and now you have to wait a year. Stay tuned. Real quick, and still on TV. Did you uh, finish Voltron? You know what? I got it, and I saw all the way. I thought I had all the episodes, but I'm missing the last two. Oh. Okay. I actually enjoyed it. Do you enjoy this show? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's different we, than the other one. Yeah. You know, the other one was like episode per episode. It was different episodes. They didn't, it kind of matched, you know, the story. But this is like an ongoing thing. It's kind of like watching Daredevil. You know, okay, it stops at this point and the next episode picks up from there. It's really good. I enjoyed it. It's got funny parts in it. It's, it's good. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I feel like it left me hanging. It, it's typical Netflix fashion, mm-hmm. though. Yeah, they did yeah. that. They do that. A lot. They release one series or mm-hmm. two. I mean, one, they release a series and they release one season. And I felt like, oh, great, because I'll binge watch it, and then I get to the end, and I'm like, damn it, damn it. I knew this was <laughs> Attack on Titan. They did that to me too. I get into it. And I'm like, ah. sorry about that. Shit. Daredevil. <laughs> no, yeah. actually, I'm looking oh, forward to Marco watched- Polo. I, I Marco Polo on Netflix. Really? Have you seen it? Nuh-uh. Yes. Watch Marco Polo. Uh, the new season Marco. is dropping in July. Yeah, <laughs> it's based on Marco Polo. It's based on the. It's based on this character named Marco Polo, who basically gets clung into the hung army. And um, yeah. why? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, basically, he's you know he's Genghis. Well, I don't remember. It's been a while since I watched it, but he's basically the Khan's kind of like uh, not advisor, but he's like his eyes in a way and it's actually really well done i mean for being a netflix original you think that it would be really low budget it's not as good as like game of thrones budget okay they don't have like nine million dollars an episode (laughs) but they definitely put a lot of money into it and they definitely put a lot of thought process in the script so once you start watching you pretty much can't stop they also did another while we were waiting for the season two they did a hundred eyes which is a chinese uh, um, uh warrior fighter Who's actually blind? They they took his eyes from him, huh. um, and he's still a fucking badass. And uh, they did another one on that. So not, not only for Marco Polo, but look for Hundred Eyes. Um, nice. It's it's just a one little movie kind of one hour thing about the you know how he became Hundred Eyes and how he came into the Hung Army and how he became like this teacher. And it's just really well done. Like I mean, yeah. I, I'm lo- really looking forward to season two. Cool, oh, cool. you know, I like him very much. <laughs> well, have you seen Preacher? No, yeah, I have not I have. seen. I have seen the preview though. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good show. Outcast is pretty decent too, but it's slow, kind of like the book. But it has moments. Like, in, I'll just say this: in the first episode, Kyle, the main guy, thank you, thank he, you very he's, much. He, I guess he thinks we believe that a demon, because you don't even know in the comic books what his deal is. But he has the ability to get rid of demons. He can cut himself and put blood on them, and the demon runs and gets in pain, or he touches them and they go ah. Anyway, one season he's trying to cure a boy, so he starts beating the shit out of this eight-year-old kid, like pounding the fuck out of him. The preacher's like, "Stop!" He throws the preacher up against the wall. He's still beating the shit out of the kid. The kid's possessed by a demon. It's fucking awesome because the demon's like talking shit too. Like, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> I, I'm definitely gonna have to check that out. Yeah. Oh, preacher's pretty good preacher. though. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's I'm, on I, AMC. I like, well, I like Constantine kind of stuff. So oh, I, think I loved Constantine. Constantine. God, why the fuck you cancel that shit? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they did that. They do that a lot with series, though. I, I noticed that. Like, there's fuck some NBC. I was hoping the CW would pick it up. Oh, oh, get this though. But CW might have Constantine on Legends of Tomorrow as a regular. Really? Yes. Well, I know he's coming back to make another appearance on Arrow. Yeah. And now that Supergirl is on the CW, you know that Arrow and yeah, Flash are going to go on that show a couple times too. They're doing a four uh, four episode crossover with all of them. Nice. So. Sounds like some freaking Dick Wolf shit with SVU, Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, Chicago Med, <laughs> all in a fucking row. I yeah. watch them all. See, this is why you ain't got no fucking time. That's right. <laughs> they got the fucking DVR set, man. I'm watching Chicago PD at midnight. Oh, I do the same thing, man. <laughs> I, I like DVR the shit out of stuff. Even the stuff I watch, just because I'll be like, man, did, did I skip something on that? Mm-hmm. Like, we do Ink Master, any of those shows, we'll just fucking DVR the shit out of them. I love that stuff. Uh, yeah. Street Outlaws, stuff like that. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. I DVR the hell out of it. I mean, I, I mean, with two kids, and I watch uh, a couple shows with my younger boy. We watch these together. We watch wrestling. Mm-hmm. We watch Raw, and we watch SmackDown. But we watch Chicago PD, Chicago Med, Chicago Fire together. That's our shows. Um, mm-hmm. As for you, I watch with my wife. And, uh, but... With Kim. now he's got me hooked on monster mountain monster shit. They're chasing Bigfoot, bunch of rednecks from West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking show is hilarious. I was like, this is fucked up. And they're out in the woods with shotguns and shit. And like, oh, there he is right there, Bigfoot right there. I saw him. I'm like, what the? Let's fuck? waste our bullets. <laughs> da, 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 da. That it was hit, a deer, and they hit nothing. <laughs> okay, so let's get into gaming news. All right, uh, and this actually gaming news will be a little different. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about about six titles that have really interested me from E3 that are coming out. Most of them are coming out this year or the beginning of next year. Um, Some of them we're going to spend a little bit of time on because I got to have Miguel here watch some of the previews. We watched a lot of the the gameplay trailers and stuff, so we know a little bit about them. Let's see if we have any kind of uh, interest in these games. These are the ones that interested me the most. The number one we're going to talk about is Days Gone. It is uh, made by SCE. Uh, Ben Studios and Sony being released solely on the PlayStation 4 and it is basically an open world zombie style game Um, so we're going to ask Miguel here Miguel you just saw this preview I know that me and Rick have seen this um, not just necessarily preview but the gameplay preview what did you think of it? I thought it was really good 
It was really amazing. The zombies come at you. Like I was telling you earlier, that's, that's some freaking 28 weeks or 28 days freaking World War Z. That's a totally different type of zombie. Uh, the graphics are really cool. I like the gameplay. And the music, man, it just creeps me the hell out. And, they, and this dumbass is going after somebody to kill. Who, the, who wants to be a bounty hunter in a, in a zombie world? Apparently this guy. Uh, apparently he's he's got a death wish. And I guess according to the storyline, uh, he lost his uh, girlfriend or wife or whatever it is. And, and there's really not much to love about the world considering it's zombie infested. So you basically you go out, you do missions as a uh, bounty hunter. And um, they take you out throughout the world, and your goal is to either eliminate, bring back supplies, whatever it is. Uh, supposedly, the the mechanics are that you will have a motorcycle, and that's going to be your main vehicle of transportation. Uh, it will be able to go with you anywhere, just like you saw in the preview. Mm-hmm. And uh, totally open world concept. Um, the See, zombies, cool. yeah, the uh, zombies you saw there are multiple different styles, and there's also hordes because you notice that they could take down with one bullet. I guess they did that on purpose because I mean, in real mm-hmm. life, if 500 fucking zombies are trying to kill you. You know, if you took 28 bullets to kill one, mm-hmm. we, you know, fuck, there's, the gameplay would be over in like five minutes. It'd be like, boot screen, walk out into field and dead. And that would be the end of the fucking game. So what do you think about it, Rick? I thought it was actually a pretty good uh, preview, you know, just the preview and the gameplay alone. And I love the mechanics of the, especially the, when it goes into open world, you can use anything in there, especially like he shows him opening up the truck and he pulls out the oil filter and uses that as a freaking silencer to silence his gun. Whoever thought about that stuff? Nobody ever thought about that. You know, the graphics are great. It's not like a destroyed world that most zombie games are that you would see. They're all out in the woods now, which we didn't see like before. Destroyed cityscape yeah. is what you're trying to say. Yeah, we yeah. don't see no destroyed cities this time. We're on we're out in the wilderness. Trees are fine. Everything's fine. But, you, you know, you, you're going after a live guy that did something, I guess, in a city or somewhere that we might see later on in the, in the game uh, where he's getting his bounties from. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you just got to be quiet and sneaky, which I know that is not your point, point of view. Oh, hell no. I'm going I'm to run in there. I'd be that jackass. He's like, I got this pistol and there's 400 zombies. Fuck it. I say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited about this game. I saw it come out. Um, it's one of those games where um, I didn't actually believe that they were going to do any more good zombie games. I think they kind of exhausted that resource, and then I saw this and, and actually got excited. I think the – and I apologize for cutting you off. No, there. no, no. It's uh, it does play better than The Walking Dead. Uh, it's definitely more exciting. But I'm curious. Like you said, bounties. I mean, what is it going to get for bounties? Who wants money? If we're in a zombie apocalypse – I'm assuming they're probably going to do it based on like food rations, keeping your health up, you know, better guns. Probably one of those games where you get really invested in this character. See, because one thing that did concern me was you have one guy, you know, one motorcycle, you're playing a character. So you have to be in- invested in this character because most people want to create their own character and then create it based on themselves or, or create it based mm-hmm. on an ideal image of themselves and then get invested in that. So how are they going to hook these people in? When they're, this, it's based on someone they've already created, and you can't fuck with that. Like you can't change that. So I think a lot of it's going to be based on other customizations, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like guns, weaponry, gotcha. what you choose when you're out there. Because it seems like once you're out there, <laughs> you're fucked. If you need a sniper rifle, you ain't got it. You I got this go. mop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. The only other like zombie game I actually enjoyed before this one's coming out was Dying Light. You know, that one actually had customization and everything in that one, just like what we were talking about and everything. But what was great about that one, which I don't know if uh, Days Gone is going to do it, but the multiplayer on right. Dying Light was awesome. You could really, I never played that game. You, Rick introduced me to it. We started playing together. Definitely a game worth checking out. If you just want to have hack and slash fun with your friends. Mm-hmm. Literally, you can play in an open world environment, go anywhere, and work together as a team to complete missions, to handle human enemies along with um, zombie enemies, hordes. Very well done game. Um, It has the breakdown system. So as you use weaponry, they break down and need to be repaired. So you have to find supplies to repair them. So even if you have a badass weapon, it only lasts for so long. So there's a lot of that. And again, uh, moving on, we'll talk a little bit about Battlefield 1 just real fast. I know we brought this game up last podcast, but let's talk about this real fast. Miguel (laughs) finally got to see... (laughs) <laughs> the, the damn preview he got to see the gameplay i showed him it looked like you wanted to literally jump into the screen and just be like here's my money take my money <laughs> but anyways let's get your take on him again okay well first of all i'm prior military so i love military games period uh i'm play a lot of call of duty play a lot of stuff but that ain't shit from what i just saw this is so freaking real it's, it's crazy the the viewpoint of the game watching shit blow up and fall down on stuff and actually do damage to the world shoot like you said earlier talking with me now you shoot a fucking hole in the wall there's a hole in the wall 
you can go through shit. The game is it looks very authentic. I'm dead serious. It looks really, really good. The gameplay looks amazing. I can't wait to play. Yeah, I'm right. Take my damn money now. Yeah. Give my game. Give my game. Yeah, you, you were like, where do I pre order? Where do I pre order this game? Yeah. Story mode, I'm assuming, and online gameplay probably? Uh online gameplay for the multiplayer, there is definitely a story mode. From what they said that the story mode is not gonna be as linear. That was one of the biggest complaints with Battlefield mm-hmm. is that the story mode was very linear. So instead of having you have an open world multiplayer. Okay, and in the open world multiplayer, you can go anywhere, do anything, blow up any building. You're in a tank. Fuck you. Blow the hole in the wall. You know, lay landmines down. But in the gameplay, it felt very kind of structured. You could only go into these few places. So a lot of people really didn't like the 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 single player version. So this time around, they've said that it's going to be a lot different. They're going to focus more on like open world co op play, a lot more co op play. So you'll be able to play with your Sweet. friends and stuff like that. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Definitely, battle. Me and Rick have already mm-hmm. talked about it, so you know how we feel about it. I think I have Battlefield One tattooed on my butt somewhere. What? <laughs> <laughs> He'll show you if you ask him. Nice. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I like how the guys were talking about how when it's a sunny day, you can see everything. But when it's going to be cloudy and rainy, you can't see shit in front of you. Realistic again. You said this earlier when we were talking. Again, I'm not up to my game gameplay talk like you guys are. I'm very impressed, actually. I will mention that. I'm very impressed with your skills on talking about these games. Um, I love the fact that you can't just like go out and it's going to be like so hard to play. You can't see shit. Realistic. So so yeah. dynamic when the so, dirt, yeah when the yeah. bombs go off you you lose vision mm-hmm. you can't see it's been one of my favorite mm-hmm. things about the battlefield series they really spent a lot of time doing that and like in this one now they're gonna have it since it's based on world war one they did use chemical weapons they're gonna mm-hmm. have it where you have to put on a gas mask because they're gonna throw mustard gas into the field and you're gonna have to fucking deal with it or you die like you be, so to me again as far as is it is it 100 percent realistic to world war one no. no they've no, already no. said this but to me, is it a game where it's got the replayability where you want to play? Hell yes. yes. A lot better than Battlefront, I feel. Yeah. This game, like I said, you have a tank, you're going to blow a hole in the tank. And we've known this, and Miguel, like I said, he sees it. What kills me is that when the Zeppelin was in the sky, and you didn't get to see this, but when it falls down, that Zeppelin stays down. And it, you can see it, and it litters the battlefield, and you have to move around it, you have to get through it, you can hide in it. All the remnants, the planes, they're all in the game. I mean, mm. insane. Like, yeah. absolutely insane. The maps are fucking huge. Yeah, I was going to say. Like, just huge. Imagine if you can get in a tank, can you get in the biplane as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh man. Okay, I'm I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you, you sold me. Yeah, the biplanes. Oh, oh yeah. No, God. all the planes, everything that's in there. Um, as soon as we saw it, literally both him and me, mm. our jaws dropped, and we were like, we're going to be like lame asses for two weeks straight. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel's going to be like, Son? hey, man, something's wrong with my car. I'll be like, suck it. I got, I nice. Yeah, I'm, not fixing, I'm not fixing shit. I can't leave the house. Is Somebody it, get me a poop can. Nice. <laughs> yeah, poop. Put on your diaper, man. Yeah. Fundo. Fundo. Wait, do I work for NASA? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I'm kind of worried about, and I'm, well, not worried about, but more concerned about, is uh, like you mentioned the biplanes. I was uh-huh. like, yeah, the, flying the planes on Battlefield Four. Oh my God! If you haven't had practice flying these damn things. Screw it. We, <laughs> Kyle and I look at it like, yeah, let's get a helicopter. And you see us go up and straight down. <laughs> All right. We're like, I hope, the, hope like it the makes it. Like the ass hats of the military. <laughs> up and down. <laughs> it's like, what do you know? Do you know how to fly? It's like, no, where are you going? In a circle. And literally, we're just spinning in a circle because we don't know where the fuck we're going. You Come know? on, man. You not watch Batman fly the bat plane? Come on. <laughs> it's like, he if makes only. it look so easy. Yeah, yeah, if only. Like, <laughs> no, there are people on there that do make it look very easy, and they make us look like we're a joke. No, <laughs> anyways, these, these games are going to be awesome. I, I can't wait for this to drop in November. I'm going to be there at the booth, like, fucking standing outside going, like, open, open. The next one up is going to be Horizon Zero Dawn. It's made by Guerrilla Games and Sony. Again, another PS4 exclusive that's coming out. This is basically like a mech dino Skyrim meets... I don't even know. Like, I don't... I, I, it's just an amazingly cool concept. Another female lead, uh, Aloy is the, the girl's name. Basically, she's trying to find her parents. It's being released in uh, February 28th, 2017. Um, after watching the gameplay, originally I thought that the gameplay they showed when I saw this a long time ago, even before you did, Miguel, mm-hmm. um, I thought that was just a cinematography. Like, I literally felt like they're just... They're, they're jipping us. This is some more cinema mm-hmm. photography... Whatever, this is not even the real gameplay, whatever. Fucking stick figure coming by, that's how you play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, the badass cinematography, they get to the game, and it's like you in a dirt hole. You know, it's, it's, it's not. But this this game looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks like, like you said, it looks like Skyrim mm-hmm. meets some third person, uh, the Division mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It looks awesome. Open world, mm-hmm. really, really yeah. awesome. What do yeah, you think? The, well, the third person view of it, I think it's a lot better than what the Division was, because it actually does give you more of a... Around base, so you can actually know what the fuck's shooting at you if you start getting hit. 
right or whatnot because in the vision at times you'll be sitting there, sitting there looking one way and he'll all of a sudden just like what the, who the fuck is shooting the, me? the camera to, angle seemed a lot better yeah seemed i hate that better. shit yeah <laughs> who the fuck's shooting at me now <laughs> which one so, you'll kick me so this one kind of like more open and you can see where you're at now you actually and uh just the mechanics of the, the way they made the mech ro- the mech animals how, i guess that's how yeah. you say them they look awesome i was just like wow and they're huge yeah they don't play they don't play these things are huge they're big and it makes you look small and i'm like how the i'm here thinking already playing the game going you're gonna be looking at this and knowing you're gonna get your controller and you're gonna swing up and look it up at this motherfucker going, I, I where think, the yeah. fuck do I shoot this I thing? I think the, the world the itself nuts. is going to look amazing. They don't have nuts. <laughs> <laughs> like, you see yeah. the USB drive just sticking out? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the USB drive sticking out? <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, this this game is beautiful. I have to say that this game is beautiful. She reminds me, the girl reminds me of uh, the Disney, is it Disney? The Brave? Yeah. She, she kind of looks like it a little bit. She, she looks like one of the characters from Game of Thrones to me, like the red Sansa. Yeah, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> the, one, the one that was uh, with Jon Snow. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Oh, oh, the wildling. Yeah, yeah. She looks like like that. But but again, female lead. I can't complain. They they do such great things with these things, and the graphics are just wow. You see oh. the gra- did you see? Okay, I know you were ooh ah, and we were all doing that with the monsters, but every little detail within the monster was moving. Yes, little thing. Yeah. I mean, like. Who the fuck does that shit? <laughs> Who takes the time to do that? Good lord! Yeah, no, you could see like when she skidded at the end yeah, behind the yeah. rock, the little dirt, the dirt, the dirt coming kind up, kind of coming up, and the, you could see like the, the the grass shavings, and you're like, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think about that either. Yeah, I think I think this game's gonna have a lot of, um, I think like immersed playability. I don't know about replayability, but it looks like it's one of those games where you're gonna get invested. My only concern is how long the game will be, because some of these games when they're that awesome looking, the gameplay is like. And I beat the game mm-hmm. in six hours. Yeah. You know, so I'm really hoping that they don't do that with this game. But again, this game looks uh, definitely worth checking out. It's all good, man. PlayStation will give you an expansion pack. <laughs> For the low, low price <laughs> of forty nine ninety five. That's right. Download takes three goddamn days. Son of a... <laughs> um, the next one that's coming up is uh, Lawbreakers, which we didn't get to really see a preview of this. Uh, I'll talk real briefly about it. It looks like a series of classes. There's four classes. It's a first-person shooter. It is basically a you know multiplayer, online, deathmatch-style game. Um, four classes. There's going to be Assassin, Enforcer, Titan, and Vanguard. I'm assuming that there is some kind of customization within each, kind of like in a Battlefield scenario. This is for people that just like to see how many kills we can add up. Like playing yeah. Goldeneye on N64 back in the day. Right. So it's like a tournament. Oh, Goldeneye. Tur- yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, I feel like they, 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 they base these games for tournament. Great. But do your due diligence into the market that we have now. Yeah. And the market. Because, yeah, go ahead. Because it doesn't, you know, if you sit there and you, like, like you said, if you don't have the mechanics of any, like any of the environment messing up or anything, the, the people who have been playing it, the ones that make the big points, they know where to fucking go every time so nobody can see them. And, and snipe you out or find the bazooka right away or, or what, whatnot. It kind of sucks, you know? Fucking campers, I hear you. Exactly. You like what you like. You want the game to be realistic. You want the fucking holes in the ground. It's like me reading a comic. I don't want just fucking art splashed. Oh, I'm tired. I'm just going to fucking, okay, this blob, that's Spider-Man. What the fuck, mm-hmm. man? No, I'm with you on this 100%. It's got to be fucking realistic. Just don't be fucking lazy. Do well, the shit right. Yeah, tell, tell yeah. a story in the comics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, again, uh, at Lawbreakers, it's Xbox and PC only. So I won't be able to play this because I do not own an Xbox. So Freaking Xbox is making this game? Freaking Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft. And they can't do this shit. Yeah. Seriously. Again, once again, I don't, wow. I don't understand. And I'm not dissing the game. I'm not saying that it's going to be awful. If you like tournament playing game, you're going to love this game. It looks exciting. And they had some really neat little things in it that looked pretty cool, like this whip that you could jump from the building they're fun they're exciting but i don't feel immersed in the game yeah it's all about killing yeah it's all about show i killed you more haha well you think they would do more research on that realizing that hey you know there's a lot more games going out we're competing against these guys you know people don't have like 300 dollars to buy four or five freaking games all right so the next game up uh, is detroit become human and this game i showed them the preview has me really really intrigued this game is a story-based clue style game uh live a uh, very very live action the graphics at first, uh, literally look like a cinematic, and it's not. It's actual gameplay. It's made by Quantum, uh, Quantum Studios, uh, and Sony. It's being released on PS4 only. No release date just yet. Um, so this game, first of all, I just want to say I'm blown away by the graphics. This game is like um, choose your own story. Yeah. So in again, I don't know the whole. They haven't released a lot on the story, but the one that they did release basically shows a 
a girl gets kidnapped and um, you're sent in as an android to talk this guy down and the choices you make before you get there before you do anything reflect real time yeah and everything everything you like basically you're going to be a detective and everything you look in the room everything you sample and everything before you go talk to this guy is going to affect your story if you find something if you miss something and you go talk to this guy you might not get it right you might get a different end this this is really fucking amazing. I am very excited for this game. Just like Battlefield 1, I'm really, really excited for this one because I like those books back in the day when you read. It's like, okay, if you select to do this, go to page 36. And you go there. That's what it reminds yes. me of. If you go yes. if do this, do this, you go to page 154. Oh, you fucking died. Fuck, start over. <laughs> That's what that is. Yeah. And it's cool. It's really cool. It's really I don't know, man. It's, it's amazing. Yes. You're making yes, your own is. movie. Yeah, basically. Yes. Basically. And uh, the cinematography mm-hmm. looks like a damn movie. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so that's Detroit becoming human. Don't be yeah. fucking broke. <laughs> Doing games and comics, I ain't gonna have a damn dime to my name. And last up on the list is a very, very creepy game. We Happy Few, uh, Xbox PC only, unfortunately. So if I do play this, I'll have to buy an mm-hmm. Xbox. Um, I might have to get it for PC. It is basically a horror action puzzle. I don't know the name. There's not a whole lot on it. Apparently the game is based on a town in England where these people take a drug called joy, where they live in this fucking really weird world where they see the world differently when they're on this drug. I keep thinking equilibrium, but it doesn't take away, like make you numb. It makes you think everything's happy, everything's great, it's all good. And I get a big, a really good Bioshock feel Ooh, yeah. from this, and I like Bioshock. When it first came out, I played the shit again. That creepy, weird Borderlands kind of creepy, creepy, like just... Yeah, because yeah. they have that freaking mask. It looks like they're wearing yeah, a bee they're... mask or some shit. Like, what yeah, the fuck like... is that? Yeah, what are they wearing? So there's no guns in this game. Uh, there's only melee attacks and melee stuff. There's no saves. There's no save points. And you're basically your goal is to get out of the city. And they're basically saying you will not get out of the city in one day. It is impossible. So there are certain points in the game where like there's safe houses and stuff like that. But there's no saves. So if you leave that safe house and die, you start all oh. the fuck over again. So you get to the safe house. You turn it off. You turn it back on. You start from there. You start from this. From that's what they're saying. But let's say you leave that safe house and you make it halfway down the the road, and some guys catch you because they can tell when you're off the drug, and you have to take it. They're telling you if you to take too much of it, then you get stuck in the game, and basically your character goes into Lululand because his brain goes <laughs> too much. So you have to take it, but you can't take too much, and you can't take too little because then you lose yourself, or you become so obvious to the rest of the world that they basically like rat you out, and then they come beat the living shit out of you and kill you. And if you leave there and die, you start all over. Ooh. Asshole. Very beginning. <laughs> See, but these are the kind of games that, to me, make it more like real life. They can make it scary. Yeah. They make the game where you're scared to go around the corner or talk to the next, the next person or the next thing because you don't know if that's the last thing you're gonna do. You yeah. know what I mean? It has that edge, that that fine mm. razor edge. You, you gotta know? have that shiv in your hand, man, <laughs> behind your back <laughs> when you're ready. <laughs> no, it does. That's the kind of game that'll piss me off. Like you'll go a couple, feet, yeah. Fucking done. God damn it. Start all over again. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> come on. It's like, there it goes out the window. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just feel like this game's going to have one of those really, really creepy, almost horror like, like, like sensations because as you begin to pull away from the drug, you could see they were beating a pinata yeah. and it turned out to it be a, a rat, rat and they were what eating the his guts. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. So again, not, not very realistic looking, very cartoonily done borderlands kind of, but definitely, definitely, I think, um, kind of looking forward to it. Just, just, yeah. just to play the creep factor. Just to play the creep factor. Just psychological <laughs> issues, man. Jesus. Yeah. I tell you what, though, you are right, though. That kind of game is a game you start playing at night. And you don't stop till the morning till you beat that shit. Otherwise, you have problems. You think you're on joy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what sucks is, is like even though it was it mentioned before? I don't know if we mentioned it before, but you said that it, uh, you'll turn off the game and come back, and it changes. Oh yeah, the yeah, world yeah. changes. Well, no, the, when you come back from a save point, the world hasn't changed. Okay. But every time you die, the world shifts. And it's not the same. So you can't go back down the same hallway or you know where to go to this fucking character and talk to this. So every time you die and come back, it's like starting the game over from pretty much scratch. Oh, so it's not like the Tom Cruise movie. When he dies, he starts. He can anticipate every move now. <laughs> Tomorrow. Yeah. That would make for a badass game. I'm just saying. Yeah. That would make for a badass game. So you game. learn to move. Step back. Go forward. Too far. No, it doesn't do that shit. It no. changes. The whole city changes around you. Jesus, how big is this game? 
Uh, I, apparently, I'm going to guess it's not physically big. I think it's going to be more puzzle based. The which AI, is what, <laughs> yeah, the AI is really going to mess with you. And I think the horror genre, and because there's a lot of games where like if you shift between the the dead and the real world, you can see the world differently, and it shifts and moves. I keep thinking Soul Reaver, yeah, you know. But I think this game's going to be very. As you see joy begin to dissipate, the rooms will change. So you'll probably get to rooms where you don't know what to do, you don't know what to click on, what the fuck, what mm-hmm. do I do? And then <laughs> as the joy begins to fade, the drug, you're going to notice different things and be able to do different things. But you probably can't let your ghost self go too far. And it's <laughs> like that movie from <laughs> Bi- Raising of the Bison. <laughs> 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 oh you know? man. You know? So. Hello? <laughs> I can't hear now. <laughs> hey, when does that game come out? When does uh, it drop? It doesn't. It doesn't. It's it's still in, in pre-release. Well, two weeks after that, there'll be a lot of cases of people having freaking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> this game is bad for you. You can't play this game if you have mental instability. <laughs> All of a sudden, you'll be like, everybody's hooked on joy. The hell is joy? <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's all I have for gaming. These are all the E3 games that I'm really, really excited about. I hope you guys are excited about them too. Yeah. Because I'm definitely excited about them. I'm looking forward to hearing what y'all think about them. So if y'all have any uh, ideas about these games, let us know. You know, yeah. Let us know what you think of them. I think you guys gave good reviews. You're very honest about it. And if the game is shit, you're probably going to say it. But you're not going to shit on them because you haven't played it yet. Yeah. You're going to honestly give them a true chance, which is cool, which is great. That's all you can ask. And I'm pissed at you now because I can't play this game because it's on Xbox. <laughs> I got to buy a shit yeah. for my PC, but yeah. now I got to go buy a PC that can handle it. Right. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to need a PC to handle this game because it's on it's on its own joy. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, all right, we're going to go ahead and jump to our next section, which uh, we do talk about collectibles. Fantastic. And uh, I recently got my new loot crate. Woohoo! And we're going to go ahead and uh, do an opening for you. How's the kid doing? The one you stole this from? <laughs> <laughs> Just, I, know. I was like, oh, no, no, my name's on this one. <laughs> uh, so as we go ahead and we're opening the box, Joy, that'd be fucking creepy. All right, bunch of pink pills and shit in there, like, uh-oh, dude, I'm there's out. a freaking hand in there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, and we got a puzzle of the Matrix. It's a 300 jigsaw puzzle. I like how a 300 jigsaw puzzle <laughs> fits Look, in a cube. No, no, it's 17 and up. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> the size of those freaking things. It's like, what the fuck? It's got to be little small pieces. No, yeah. shit. Dude, that would drive you insane. And, of course, you get the loot crate pin, which looks like the nuke from Fallout, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nuke from Fallout. Loot pin. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's the loot pins that they always give out. Oh, oh, a little pin. Oh, okay. Put on your hat. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, of course, you get the, with every loot crate, now they're giving away a t-shirt. And I, and I have, dun, dun, dun. it's RoboCop. Really? Dun, dun. Wait a minute, wrong movie. There you go. Come with me if you want to live. RoboCop. Speaking and of that, did y'all review the new RoboCop? No, we have. Uh, mm-hmm. Did you like it? Mm-hmm. No, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, old school's best. We don't talk about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, being a guest on our show, Miguel, mm-hmm. I'm going to give you my, RoboCop t-shirt. You sure? Because I think Kyle really liking it. <laughs> I don't want to get beat up out of here. No, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. If he does, no, you know. No, no, this is, uh, this is definitely. It's not a, his size. A fat guy shirt. Yeah, now, go ahead and say it. <laughs> <laughs> you can shrink that bitch. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm pretty sure it will shrink. Thanks, man. Let me see. What is this? Jesus Christ. 3X? It has nothing to do with Jesus. <laughs> hey, I can wear this as a nice shirt. There you go. <laughs> Tell you what, I will sport this on Comical Sunday. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. I, I ain't even going to watch it either. It's going to wear it like this. <laughs> Smells new. <laughs> uh, then we also got a I also got a Bioshock Infinity Blank Key. Bioshock. Of, what are the odds of that right now? We were just talking about, about that, that shit. Isn't it? Uh, the microphone in that thing? <laughs> what the freak? And then also what, uh, part of my collectibles I like. Is, what are you going to uh, do with this? I guess it's, you can make it. Oh, yeah, you can make it. It's, oh, it's a blank cool. key. You can make it as a key. That's cool shit. Yeah. And then also, I, what I collect also, I collect dorbs. And they have a Fallout armor from the dorbs. Oh, wow. Came. Oh, nice. Let's hey, that's what I got my wife. Not the Fallout, but I got the Wonder Woman. You got the Wonder Woman dorbs. At, she liked uh, it, by the way. Oh, she did? Good call on that, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. That's right. I got brownie points. <laughs> this and, is, oh, that's pretty freaking cool. Yep. And this is going to be awesome that we... That, it next time you show up to the layer here, it'll be on the wall. I think Kyle's gonna like this too. Oh, we Uh-oh. got what well, we got. Drum roll. Oh, <laughs> it is a T two skull oh. metal tin that you can hang on the wall. Oh no shit! Oh and shit! 
It's oh, real. It's, it's, it's real. real. <laughs> if the light glares a certain way, the eyes look like they glow. No, fr- holy shit, it does. Dude, I got to take a picture of this because you know, who- oh man, I just turned on my phone and the lights like glowed up and just creeped my ass out. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, Justin would shit himself with that, boy. I think, Kyle, we should figure out a way to hang that because I don't know how to hang that up on the on the wall here. You know what you do? You buy those things the teachers use on their walls. They use yeah, those the little sticky, sticky, sticky stuff put on the back. Tacks, yeah. So you put it on there. Oh, so oh I'll find stuff. a way to put it on the wall. Semen. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, Kyle. What do you use on your walls? Oh, my Lord. If Nobody's going to look behind it. Say, so, Kyle, if you use that, be sure I'm not here when you put it up. I need some hand sanitizer. I shook this motherfucker's hand. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, it comes with the normal Loot Crate magazine. It just explains everything that you have in the Loot Crate. Let's see that box. In the box, you can turn it inside out because it does a whole... What? Yeah, every Loot Crate box, it has a whole theme. So when you flip it inside out and everything, it actually has a theme of whatever it is. And it actually looks oh, pretty cool. fucking cool. It is the Fallout. Yeah. It's actually made for the door. For the door here because... Uh, let me show you. I think there's a picture of it in here. I'll really trip out about it. It's a diorama. But he, yeah, he's got it right. Just like that. It stands up like that, and you put the door right in the middle of it. That's freaking cool. I didn't even know that crap. Yeah. All the boxes do that. They all have a certain way of uh, opening up. So I would like to take a moment to thank uh, United States Postal Service for not destroying this box like you do every other goddamn box <laughs> that I get in the mail. No shit. No shit. That's one thing I'm glad. The only thing I worry about half the time. Well, this box is kind of sturdy. Yeah, it is very sturdy. There's one thing I worry about half the time, which sometimes I want to change my mailing address house or maybe having it delivered over here to the lair. Uh, it, gets delivered, it gets delivered to my house. This, these boxes actually don't fit in the mailbox. So oh, he put it, he leaves it right there in my front door. And now that change the address and now that kids are out of school, I'm all like, uh, what day does he drop it off? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what day uh, is that? Do you know what yeah, time? Yeah, when? <laughs> <laughs> is it when you're at work? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like no, I get a I get an email saying and tracking device when it when it gets sent. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Oh, okay. so I don't know what day it'll be sent. Have you seen this new soon. loot crate I got? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's weird because Rick's is missing. <laughs> I know loot crate just started delivering to my house. <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> but, I never uh, even signed up for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, I I, I enjoy loot crate. It's uh, it gives you a lot of stuff. For a cheap price, you get you know a lot of collectible stuff that you can actually put up. And if you like the collectibles, like I do, yeah. And I, I just ordered the uh, Loot Crate Gaming, so we'll be take, we'll be opening that once I get mine in and going from there. So, you guys suck, man. Y'all making me look like cheap asses because my <laughs> kids want Loot Crates too. Now, Miguel, I know Comic Book Podcast all talks about comics. Did you know that there's actually a comic book uh, box? No, Dude. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's co- it's called Comic Bento. I think is what it's called. Huh. I think that one's also twenty bucks, and they give you like a stack of comics. But the only great thing, like more shit I need to buy. Yeah. The only Thanks. Thing, <laughs> well, the only, I mean, it's just just the thought. But the only thing I don't know about is that it just throws a whole bunch of comics in, so you don't know what you're going to be getting. You <laughs> might get a rare one, or you might get a one that's worth the pieces. You know, I don't know if they would actually put anything. Would, would, do you think they put anything in here that's super rare? They have. Really? They have. No yes, freaking have. way. Way. <laughs> this is pretty cool. So twenty dollars. Yeah, hmm. like yeah, about you know with <laughs> shipping and handling, it came into like twenty one and some change. Hmm. So it's not bad. Hey, uh, let me borrow your credit card. No, <laughs> <laughs> you a big baller, man. It's like, hold on, hey Kyle, let me see that credit card of ours. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that company card? You mean those coupons I stole? <laughs> <with the> <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh uh, yeah, it was a great show, awesome show. Did you enjoy the show? Yeah, did I did. Here? I enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun. Good. Yeah, uh, I want to thank Miguel for coming from Comical Podcast. I really appreciate your time coming here, you know, just supporting us. You know, it's been awesome. I, I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. I'm a Comical Podcast, too, on Twitter. Justin's at Comical Podcast. Our Gmail, Comical Podcast, Gmail, Comical Podcast, too, at Gmail. We're pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our website is just www.comicalpodcast.com. Oh, well, I love the, the chemistry you two have is great. The flow of the show is funny. You, you got your stuff going. You know what you want to talk about. I enjoyed myself. I really did. I was just sitting here watching you, and I could be me, which was cool. Dumbass Miguel. Okay, you can connect with us on Twitter. At critical underscore thinking. On Facebook and Instagram. At critical thinking podcast. And at Podbean. On critical thinking podcast dot podbean dot com. And if you like the show, please show your support by five starring the episode and telling your friends. So thank you for joining us. Thinking shit through one podcast at a time. (laughs) 